Finally tonight, as we celebrate the final days of Black History Month this weekend, a reminder that history is still being made right now by some pretty incredible people. And that includes Miss Sheila Johnson. She's a powerhouse in business and media and has spent decades making the boys sweat. But don't define her by her wealth. What means the most to this trailblazer is making sure she's paying it forward. <laughs> This is what taking risks feels like, sounds like, because Sheila Johnson has been a risk taker all her life. So it shouldn't be a surprise that she just learned how to play the cello during COVID. What is it about music that contributes to the success of a human being? When you're sitting in an orchestra playing with a string quartet, you have to watch, you have to listen. I can read people's faces. I can tell whether they're lying to me or whether they're telling me the truth or they're just playing with me. A fearless focus that led this University of Illinois music major and teacher to quite a fortune. Co-founding Black Entertainment Television in 1980 soon to become the first black woman billionaire after its sale. Profits that have now become passion projects, managing, operating, and investing in people, communities, and culture that emboldens her brand. Salamander Hotels and Resorts. Why did you pick the word salamander? This is the only animal that can walk through fire and still come out alive. A walk that started when Sheila's dad enrolled her in an all-white school during segregation, her light skin keeping her under the racist radar. A covert resilience that eventually led her here to Middleburg, Virginia, a town built by slaves hundreds of years ago and a bold business deal that would define her destiny here. I remember coming in the town every day and I noticed a gun shop with a Confederate flag in the window. It distressed me so much. I then called my lawyer and I said, there's this building, I gave him the address. And I said, let's see if I can buy it. And I ended up buying the building. Flag comes down. I turn it into a market. From integrating and influencing the boardroom to the big boys, to the owner's box, Sheila is also the only black woman to hold a stake in three pro sports teams. I can be in a suite and there's all these white males up there and I'm listening to them. They have been out on yachts together. They have played golf together. And I remember one time there was another deal going down in that box. And I went over to and I heard them say Michael Jordan's name. I'm like, whoa, uh, how many females do you have in invested in this? And they go, well, no. I said, I'm investing. Well, we've closed it. I said, no, you're going to open it back up. And I became an investor. From a man's world to mentor. Johnson hasn't just invested in sports, she's invested in women. How did it make you feel to see your players protesting for social justice? When I saw them come out on the court and turn around with the bullet holes in the back of their shirts, I said, I can't believe they're doing this. Boy, are they brave. That was my first thought. The second thought was, I'm like, you go. You go, girls. You are really making a statement here. And then that's when I got goosebumps. Fearlessness, firsts, the Sheila Johnson gifts that keep on giving. You grew up in the same apartment building in Detroit as Rosa Parks. That is true. And then you have Sheila Johnson giving you a front row seat to an opportunity. Absolutely anything is possible like giving 50 women and men of color a full ride to Harvard. Kimberly Dowdell is a Sheila Johnson Fellow and now one of only 500 black women architects in the country. Sheila's mantra, you invest in the person, they invest in the world. What Mama J uh, represents is the fact that black women are excellent and can be excellent and can change 
the perception of, of what it is to be a black woman. They are now running for office. They are now doctors in different hospitals. I have one young lady who's now uh, clerking for Supreme Court Justice, Sonia Sotomayor, it's a mouthful. I have um, another young man who was homeless. He's now working for Samsung. I mean, they're all so successful and I'm so proud of them. Mentorship, easy. Being a mom. How do you raise humble, hardworking kids when you're wealthy? You learn to say no. <laughs> Have you been okay with the nose? The, the nose have definitely made me a better person. And like his mom, an adventurous entrepreneur, Brett Johnson is one of the youngest black luxury menswear designers globally. I mean, my mom always talks about, I mean, Brett, you have to have thick skin <laughs> to, to the nth degree, but use that as fuel, use that as motivation. To, to keep pushing forward. Is it harder to be a successful woman or is it harder to be a successful black woman? People always say, you know, you're a very successful black woman, but I see myself as a woman. You can pin any label on me, whatever. They call me a light-skinned black woman or whatever they want to do. I just find I'm a woman and a woman who had a mother that always said, you should never lose your power. Which brings us back to conquering the cello. How sweet the sound. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.